Hi everybody and welcome to the second tutorial on how to use the Mind Covenant reporting platform. In this tutorial, we will learn how to complete the emission inventory part of Mind Covenant. Before starting, we would like to explain some new elements of this part of Mind Covenant. To accommodate limitations in data availability, for instance, the absence of emission data, the non-occurrence of an emission source category, the emission inventory tab includes a set of annotation keys. You may choose to use any of the notation keys proposed. However, when data is available, it is recommended that you type in a numerical value. There are four notation keys proposed. The first one, NO, not occurring. This notation key can be used when an activity or process does not occur or exist within the city or for its significant sources, i.e. included elsewhere. This notation key can be used when greenhouse gas emissions for activities are estimated and presented in another category of the emission inventory or are covered by dedicated reporting system. This is, for instance, the case of the ETS, the emission trading system. Third, C, confidential. This notation key can be used when greenhouse gas emissions could lead to disclosure of confidential information. This could be the case for sensitive military operations or industrial facility. And last, and E, not estimated. This notation key can be used when greenhouse gas emissions occur but have not been estimated. Note that by default, the notation key and E, not estimated, is applied to the entire emission inventory tab. You will be able to select another annotation key from the drop down menu included in each cell, or by using the same drop down menu to type in a numerical value. To access the Emission Inventory section, click on My Inventories in the Reporting Corner. This part of My Covenant consists of three main tabs. The first tab is the Emission Inventory. As a reminder, when completing the tab, all the fields called in green are mandatory fields, while all those in white and light gray are optional. As a first thing, you will need to select the emission factors you would like to use. You can choose between IPCC, LCA, or your national subnational emission factor. When selecting the national or subnational emission factor, you will need to provide the emission factor name and the source, because only official emission factors from a national or subnational public body are accepted. The emission factors table below will display the default factors for the approach and the unit selected. You can either choose to use this or replace them. In the next table, you will need to report data for your final energy consumption. Or you can either report data using a numerical value or use one of the notation keys proposed. To do so, you will need to select the notation key from the drop menu included in each cell. If you wish to include a numerical value, you need to select the option type and type in the numerical value. To comply with the covenant minimum requirement in the final energy consumption table, you will need to report data in at least three of the four key sectors marked with a key icon in the table. The four covenant key sectors are municipal buildings, equipment and facilities, tertiary non-municipal buildings, equipment and facilities, residential buildings, and transport. Back to the table. What you see now is a compacted version of the final energy consumption table. The table includes three macro sectors, building, equipment, facility, and industries, transport, and other. Each macro sector includes a set of sectors and subsectors. The first macro sector is building equipment facilities and industries. This macro sector is organized in a set of sectors and subsectors. You can choose to report data in an aggregated way at sector level or to report data in a disaggregated way at the subsector level, always keeping in mind the minimum requirement for the key sector. To report data, you will just need to type the numerical values in the relevant cells. Note that you can only type in in the white cells, while the light gray cells include automatic calculation. For the municipal buildings and the tertiary building sectors, to report data in an aggregated way at sector level, you will need to provide the numerical value using the row other. These values are then displayed in the top row. The second macro sector is transport. Also, this macro sector is organized in a set of sectors and subsectors. Note that if you have chosen transport as a key sector, you will need to report the data in at least one of the subsectors proposed. 
To report your data, you will just need to type in the numerical values in the relevant cells. Note that you will only be able to type in the white cells, while the gray ones include automatic calculation. Also in this case, you can choose to report data in an aggregated way at a sector level, or to report data in a disaggregated way at subsector level. For all sectors under the transport macro sector, to report the data in an aggregated way at a sector level, you will need to provide numerical values in the rows other. These values are then displayed in the top rows. Each sector includes a list of possible relevant transport modes, such as road, rail, local and domestic waterways, and local aviation. As a rule, for local and domestic waterways and local aviation, you should only report emissions from journeys occurring inside the municipality boundaries. This means that only emissions from journeys that are fully confined within the boundaries, that are both starting and ending inside the municipality, should be considered. For waterways, it could be the case of touristic cruises, while for aviation, it could be the case of emergency helicopters. The last macro sector is called other. This macro sector includes agriculture, forestry and fisheries, and any other sector not covered by the previous sectors. In the next table, you can report certified green electricity purchased by the local authority as well as by any other actor within the municipality boundaries. With certified green electricity, we mean electricity produced for renewable energy sources covered by guarantees of origin. In the case of electricity generated exclusively from renewable energy sources, you should specify the respective amount of local generated electricity in megawatt hours using the following table. You may choose to report the amount for each plant type or to report only the total if the information is not available. Note that if you are using IPCC emission factors, by default the renewable energy emission factor is zero. If you are using LCA emission factor, you should indicate the CO2 emission factor for the renewable electricity generated using the emission factor column. In the next table, you will need to report the electricity produced by combined heat and power plants or by any other plants not listed. In the case of combined heat and power plants, you should only report the electricity produced while the heat and cold produced is reported in the coming table. If heat or cold is supplied as a commodity to end user within the territory of your local authority, you should report the amount of heat and cold using the local heat and cold production table. In this table, you should also report the amount of energy sources used to generate heat and cold, as well as the amount of CO2 emissions related to the heat cold production. In the next table, you can report data for emissions generated in non-energy related sectors. When completing this table, you will need to indicate both the emissions and the activity data. This means that for the waste management, you will need to report the tons of waste treated, while for the wastewater, you will need to report the amount of cubic meters of water treated. Using this table, you can also choose to report other non-energy related emissions. Finally, if you wish to add any extra information, you can use the additional comments box provided. In the last table, you will see the calculated emission inventory. You will not need to complete this table. Using automatic calculations, this table generates the final emissions. These emissions are based on the data you have reported in all the tables above. When you finish, you can click on the Save All button to save all the inputted data. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. For further details, we invite you to consult the reporting guidelines document linked in the description below. In case you would have any additional questions, do not hesitate to contact the Covenant on Mayor's Office Help Desk or the GRC help desk using the contacts linked in the description below.